place in us. You have no part in us. We have no part in you. Two cannot work together except they agree. We are children of God. We are children of God. We stand for God. We stand with God forever and ever. Amen. And ever and ever. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So it is. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, choir. God bless you. I am overwhelmed this morning. I am overwhelmed this morning. Thank you, Daddy, for this privilege to minister at this time. Holy Spirit, just have your way. But my message has not started. I want to talk about my husband. How can everybody talk about my husband? And Yale will not have something to say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How did it all start? Please sit down, choir. God bless you. I read this scripture in Mark chapter 19. That is easy for a camel to enter into the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. And I started praying from that day, God, I will never marry a rich man. I'd rather marry a poor man that will serve God together, have the fear of God, and make it to heaven. And God spoke to me one day, I will make you to marry a rich man so that you will know that there are rich men that fear God. Hallelujah. Daddy, I want you to know that God knows that you fear him. That's why he brought me to you to prove what he told me and I have seen it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I will make you to marry a rich man so that you will know that there are rich men that fear God. Don't go and do like that story they used to tell us when we were small. Oh. I don't know how many of us heard all those stories. The adopted child will go to the river and her pot will mistakenly fall inside the river. And she will be crying. And the spirit of the water will now come and give her fine pot and egg. So when you reach us, break the egg. Fine things will come out. And when she reaches her, she will break the egg and find things will come out. And the wicked stepmother will send the daughter, come on, you go your own, no. Go and, go and f throw your pot inside water so that you will get your own egg. And they told us when the wicked stepmother's child got there, threw the pot inside water, and so they cried, my pot. And the spirit came and said, why is it my pot? He said, okay, take this egg. When you get to break it. When he got, she got over, she broke it. Wizards and witches came out and started flogging her. I don't know how many of us heard that story. Praise the Lord. So don't do like me, oh. God has plans for everybody. Odi no di no di. And I got married to my husband. One thing I learned from him from the beginning was orderliness. Because I'm a very carefree person. Jide Chowa. That's what my mom used to call me sometimes. Where did I keep that key? Where did I keep that And he will say, oh yeah, put nail. All keys. This way. Mommy, where is the car key? Have you hung it? It's in my bag. Why is it in your bag? I started learning that. The next thing I learned as we were growing, faith. Nothing is impossible. You get to a place. They say, oh, nobody said, who said so? Mommy, let's go. Let him get there and find out that it's not possible before he will agree with you that it's not possible. But for him to hear on the way to the place that it's not possible 
and he will turn back is not true. He will get there and try everything he can. If it's not possible, then he will say, yes, it's not possible. I've tried what I can. My husband, a lot of people don't understand him. But when you do, you will know he's a special species. God created him for a purpose. You know, I told us sometime that when I was saying, ah, God, help daddy. Sometimes he's prone to saying some things, he, the way he reacts to something. And the Spirit of God said, your prayer cannot change him. Because that is how I have made him. For the assignment I have called him for. And the Spirit of God said, look at Saul that later became Paul. Because of who he was, that was why he was able to fit into the assignment I called him to. That so you see your husband, this attitude is from me because of the assignment I have called him into. And I say, God, give me wisdom. I'm here this morning to say, Daddy is a selfless person. When I say selfless, I mean selfless. He is so selfless. When he wants to do something here, he doesn't look back. He will go all out for it. He will go all out for it. A pastor that came to the Lord yesterday was telling him, do you remember my face? He said, no, I cannot. He said, you can't remember my face. 19 so, 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 so. I came to Portacourt with my family. You were one of those that helped us. You gave me money when I came to you and explained my, my case. He said, sorry, I cannot remember. He said, look at me. He said, sorry, I cannot remember your face. When he wants to do something, he does it all out. You know, when the Bible says, the zeal of the Lord will perform it, that is how that it is. When he wants to do something, in body no go rest until don't drum. You will see what I'm saying. One of it will happen today. Once the thing don't enter in mind, the zeal go just the push up. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. It's now. It's now. Until he does it, he will now calm down. Praise the Lord. That is who God has given me. I am privileged to be married to one of the best men that God created. I'm not just making mouth. I'm, I'm saying it. For me to be saying it as his wife, I forgot what he did one day. I said, Daddy, it's only me that knows this part of you. Praise the Lord. For me to be saying it, my husband is a man of God. He fears God. We went for a program one day and the pastor was introducing daddy. He said, this is one of the pastors in Portacourt that still fears God and upholds righteousness. You will not lose that identity in the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of the Lord shall be upon you. There are so many things God has planned for you that the devil is afraid of. And that's why some things are just go. But Ekwensu Jesus, God bless you, sir. It's a new age. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Happy birthday, Daddy. And happy wedding anniversary to me.
was just 20 plus. Every time we celebrate like this, I remember. You know, these some people used to run around. Hey, have they cooked? Who is cooking? Hey, cake. I didn't know anything. I was just telling my daughter yesterday. All I did was to go to my pastor's wife, my pastor's house and stay there. He said, what did you go to do? I said, ah, that's how we used to do those days. Oh. You have to go there. Let them see your wedding gown and know whether it qualifies. And let them cancel you to be a good wife. And my daughter said, why is it only the woman they will cancel? Who is canceling the man? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God loves this girl. God loves her from the womb. I always say it. We are three girls. But only me was and is called Ifoma. Ife Marama. Ife Marama. Ife Dima. Ife Dime Ruomaka. You see this girl? Very small girl. And God say, I'm taking you out of the dung hill. I'm setting you to sit among the princes. That is my story. Got married. People were beating me. Small girl. Lenunta. 50 years in May. That 20 plus. I didn't even know how to cook very well. So if you are here, you don't know how to cook. Don't worry. Oh. My daughter said, Mommy, since you told me that you didn't even know how to cook very well before you married, I I'm even better than you. I said, no problem. I didn't even know how to cook very well. So don't worry. I'm not saying you should not know how to cook. Oh. Learn how to cook. Oh. But I, that's why I say I'm a special special. I didn't even know how to cook very well. I didn't know how to cook very well. But now when you lick, eat my food. I didn't know how to cook very well. My mom died very early. And I was in the body house for a lot of time. Each time I came back, just few weeks, and I'm back. I'm back to school. So when I got married, I've said it before. My mom used to cook just small pot of soup that will last for one or two days. And she used to use two cubes of Maggi, Maggi star, two. And when I got married and I was going to cook pot of soup that will last for two weeks, I was still using two cubes of Maggi to cook. Because I thought that was it. No matter how much the soup is, two cubes of Maggi. I started learning. My mother-in-law did a lot. God bless you, mommy. She's going to be 94 next month. During her 98th birthday, they were calling people to come and talk. And I went to the MC. I said, I have to talk. They didn't put my name, but I went. I said, I have to talk. And I told them my mom died very early. So just three years into my marriage, my mom died. So a lot of things my mother-in-law taught me. A lot of things. A lot of things. She was so patient with me. She loves her son so much. Her only son with four girls. Her only son. And she transferred that love to me. She told me one day, say, Tony, that's what she calls me. I have to love you because I love my son. If I don't love you, you will not give my son peace. So I have to love you. My mother-in-law is a wise woman, a God-fearing woman. The other day she said she doesn't know why God is still keeping her. She has not finished her assignment. She's so good to die. She taught me a lot. She taught me a lot. When I'm making a mal, I say, I told you it's not like that. This is how you have to do it. This is how you have to hold the napkin. This is how you have to turn it. Or you put it in between your legs. Or you turn it. 
she was patient with me. And God has helped me in the marriage. Like a sister that led prayer yesterday, that women, we have the ability to give birth, whether to good or to evil. And before birth, what happens? Conception. So what you conceive will determine what you will give birth to. So as much as possible, conceive the right thing and you will give birth to the right thing. The Lord will honor every one of you. Your shortcomings will not count against you. He will take you to greater levels in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, take over this moment. Thank you for this privilege. I'm not worthy to speak this morning. But you decided that I should speak. I don't want to speak anything that you've not put in my heart. Let it be only what you have said. Even if it's different from what I've written. Prevail and bless your church this day. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My topic is my pastor, my member. My pastor, my pastor, Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15, Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15, are we there? Okay, we are taking to 17, God is the one speaking here, and I will give you pastors according to what you want according to whose heart according to my heart who will feed you with money is that what is there who with which shall feed you with what knowledge and what understanding and it shall come to pass that because of the knowledge and understanding you will be multiplied and you will increase in the land in those days, saith the Lord, there shall no more the act of covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. Verse 17. At that time, they shall call Christ the Rock Foundation Chapel, the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, so Christ the Rock Foundation Chapel, neither shall they walk anymore after the imagination of what? Their evil hearts. My pastor, my member. My pastor, my member. Who is a pastor? From the scripture we have read, somebody that will take care of people and teach them knowledge and understanding that knowledge and understanding is what we bring increase the knowledge and understanding is what we change their status a lot of people come to church and they expect the wrong thing from their pastor and that is why they don't grow they remain in the same position because they are expecting the wrong thing. God says for any pastor after my heart, what that pastor will do for you is to teach you knowledge and understanding. I listened to somebody sometime and the person was saying, a lot of people that are in authority don't want others to come up. Because that is the only way they can enslave them. That is the only way they can remain their servants. Because from the moment they come up with knowledge and wisdom, like I've read here now, I'm the one adding this now, those people will not serve them again. So many pastors and some people in high positions, they want people to remain in the same place. When you come to them, they give you 10 naira. When you say, oh, this, they tell you, okay, don't worry, I'll tell somebody to come and do this. But thank 
God for our pastor. Our pastor wants you to learn. Our pastor wants you to know. When he sees anything that profits him, he wants to announce it to everybody so that they too can partake of that thing and let it profit them too. That is what the Bible is saying. Pastors after my heart that we teach you so you can have understanding. So beloved, today I want to plead with you. If you have been coming to church not to gain knowledge and understanding, then you are not coming for the right reason. When you come to church, you must have that mindset that you want to gain knowledge, that you want to gain understanding. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you look at our daddy, you cannot stay with him and remain the same except you want to. You cannot be poor around our daddy except you want to. You cannot lack boldness around our daddy except you want to. For every family that we have interacted with when we travel out, they have seen the grace of God. And every one of them that have learned, they are not depending on government like every other person abroad. They have learned to plan. Hey, that's daddy's second name. Planning. And he will teach you planning. For you to gain wisdom. For you to gain knowledge. For you to gain understanding. The Bible tells us that by wisdom, a house is built. By knowledge, it is established. And by understanding, you can bring in wealth and riches. Beloved, that is what you need. You need wisdom. You need knowledge. You need understanding. And that is what God wants you to have this morning. You will have it in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, no, the pastor is to feed with knowledge and understanding. That will lead to increase. What do you usually expect from your pastor? Pastor is someone that God has made to be your spiritual father, to be your director, to be your guide, your instructor. Do you see your pastor like that? Whether in your various cities or here in, in Gloryland City. Do you see your pastor as your guide? Do you see your pastor as your instructor? Do you see your pastor as your spiritual father? Except you begin to see him like that you will not be able to be the right member. Who is a member? A member is somebody that God has brought to a pastor and said, take care of him. Praise the Lord. Nurture him. Feed him. Guide him. Help him to grow and fulfill purpose. The Yorubas we say, it is a child that raises his hand that you can carry. If you don't open your hand for somebody to carry you, you cannot be carried. What kind of member are you? Are you a member that listens to your pastor? Or you are a member that makes your pastor to cry? I want you to ask yourself this morning, what kind of member am I? I have some examples here. I say, who are you to your pastor? Are you a burden bearer? The Bible tells us about Joseph the Aramathia. What happened when Jesus needed to be put into a tomb? What happened? He came and carried the body of Jesus into the tomb. Or is it Simon? When Jesus was carrying the cross and it was heavy for him, Simon came and carried the cross. Are you like the people that helped Joshua to win the battle? Aaron and Hall, Exodus 17, verse 10 to 13. The Bible says when they were fighting and they discovered that every time the hands of Moses was lifted up, they were winning. Joshua was winning. But each time he brought it down, they did not win. And what did they do? Aaron and Hall decided to hold the hands 
And as they were holding it at some point, they too were feeling weak. They brought stone and they put it so that the hand will continually be up. And the Bible said that day, Joshua discomfited the people. Are you a burden bearer to your pastor? They would have just been complaining. Ah, Moses, please keep your hand up now. Ah, are you not a pastor? Why are you putting down your hand? They will forget that he was a human being and that the flesh too will get weak and come down. And they will just be talking. Look at him. He says he's a pastor. He can't even raise his hand for just five hours. Look at him. Are you a burden bearer or a tail bearer? Who are you to your pastor? Are you like the sons of the, the, the son of Noah? The Bible said Noah was drunk. Remember, all of them made it to the ark. That means they were all saved. But at some point, Noah missed it. And he was naked. And the son was looking at him and laughing at him. And another son came. I said, Why are you doing that? And that covered them. Are you a cover cloth to your pastor? Who are you to your pastor? We are celebrating your pastor today. Are you a tail bearer or a body bearer? Are you somebody that will lift up his hand when he's weak? Or you are somebody that wants to portray his nakedness? I want you to keep asking yourself as you're listening to me. Who are you to your pastor? Who are you to your pastor? Will your pastor remember you and be glad? Will your pastor say, God, which kind of member have you given to me? Who are you to your pastor? Look at the case. Ah! Let's look at that scripture. Jeremiah. Sorry, I'm coming. Matthew 23. Matthew 23, verse 37. Matthew 23, verse 37. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, call them twice. Thou that killest the prophets, you get to 39, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, but you will not. Verse 38. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. 39. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Are you a member that stones your pastor? Are you a member that kills your pastor? He said, I wanted to do great things with you. But I cannot. Until you come out to say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Until you begin to accept he that I have sent to you. Until you begin to accept he that has come to, me, to you. We cannot be blessed if we do not accept people that God has sent to us. You must not be those that kill their pastor. Be somebody that your pastor will remember and say, God, thank you. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23. Philippians chapter 2. These are the kind of members that pastors are looking for. Verse 19. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you that I also may be of good comfort when I know that you are safe. For I have no man like-minded like Timothy who will naturally care for your sakes just like I do. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Jesus Christ. But you see this, Timothy? Ye know the proof of him that as a son with a father, he had saved me in the gospel. Him therefore 
I hope to send presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust the Lord that I also myself will come shortly. Praise the Lord. Can your pastor trust you like Timothy trusted Paul? Like Paul trusted Timothy, rather. Can your pastor tell God, God, thank you for giving me this girl, this lady. Thank you for this woman that you have brought to this ministry. Can your pastor be praying and remember you in his prayers? I told her sometime, sorry to say, I picked a lady, I went to Ministry of Education that day and we're just coming I have forgotten what we were talking about and I told, told her, I said, God, I don't even know why God made me a pastor. He would have just left me as a member. In fact, my pastor would have enjoyed me so well. And I just heard a voice, are you regretting your calling? I said, God, please forgive me, I'm not regretting my calling. But sometimes, people and situations in the church make you want to regret the calling. I want to plead with us this morning, those that are in the hall and those that are hearing my voice. Can you bring joy to your pastor? Can your pastor talk to, about you like Timothy? That Timothy is like-minded. Timothy will accept we do everything I ask him to do the way I want it. If I it will be as if I'm the one doing it. These are the kind of members pastors are looking for. I was listening to somebody one day, the person said, a, a visiting pastor will come to a church and he has not even said anything. Everybody shouting, Amen! Because they are excited about the personality of that pastor. But your pastor that nurtures you, that prays for you, that is there with you, when he's talking, you take him lightly. I was talking to some people. I said, acceptability is very important. Look, at, I want you to take note of all the scriptures we've read. Blessings come when you accept the minister that God has given to you. Blessings come when you begin to walk in line with what God has asked you to do in the ministry, blessings come at such time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When we accept it, God will begin to do wonders in our lives. God will begin to lift us up. God will begin to do great things that we cannot even imagine. That is what we read in all those scriptures when we accept the Lord. Look at Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 47. After Peter spoke on the day of Pentecost, the Bible said what happened there? They were praising God and they had favor with the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. A pastor that do not have favor with the people they cannot have growth and they cannot be saved. Not just salvation of spiritual salvation. Salvation from various things. If you follow the scriptures we have re we've been reading, that's what the scripture is telling us. So beloved, this day, I want you to know that God wants you to be a great representative to your pastor. Paul called Timothy a co-laborer in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2. Can your pastor call you a co-laborer? Why are you a member? Why are you there? Like during our Sunday school, we're learning that we need to be available, that we need to be ready. We need to serve with the right heart. We need to obey completely. And our mommy told us something, that there is always a reward. That is just that many of us, when the reward begins to come, you don't try to link it because of your labor. 
But the Bible says God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. There is no way you will walk with your pastor in, the, in line with God's will that God will not bless you. All of us in the cities, I want to plead with you. You are not doing your pastor a favor. You are not doing your pastor a favor by coming to church and serving God. No! We must ensure that we serve. Because it will help the work of God to grow and God will do great things in our lives. Also, I want to talk to us, Pastor. A lot of our members are not here. It is not good. It is very, very bad. Some of them are workers. They are not here. How did you portray this program to them? What did you tell them that we are coming to do? How did you present the program? I was sharing with my children recently, Matthew chapter 3, where John the Baptist was baptizing. And at some point, he told them, he said, you people are amazed. I'm just baptizing you with water. And you think I'm one kind important person. Somebody greater than me is coming that will baptize you with fire. He was important, but he knew that there was somebody that was greater than him. And he portrayed Jesus. But many are not like that today. Many are like Absalom. What did my father say? How did he judge that case? Hmm, if it were me. I would have said this. I would have done it like this. I would have, no, 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 no. We can't grow like that. Some pastors, thank God for Christ, the Royal Foundation Chapel. We are totally different. But some ministries, they send somebody to somewhere to start a branch. Suddenly, before you know, they change the name of the church. They change everything. They say it's my sweat. We sweat, Biko. We sweat. How did you get there in the first place? Who sent you there? Who's work? And that's why the Bible says, if the righteous scarcely be saved, what will happen to the just and the ungodly? <laughs> the godly. John the Baptist said, this water baptism is nothing. Compared to the baptism of fire, there is somebody greater than me. God has called everybody in different office. The moment we begin to do that, look at even Jesus himself in that same scenario. When John the Baptist said, see, I'm not baptizing you. You are the one that should baptize me. Jesus said, let it be so for now. So we can do the will of the Father. Like sometimes daddy will sit and let us minister. He will be blessed. He will, he will listen to us and all of that. We must know when to come down so that the will of the father will be done. My pastor, my member. God wants to lift us up. God wants to establish us. And he will establish every one of us in the name of Jesus. I asked a question here. I said, when your pastor thinks about you, what comes to his mind? Is it joy? Is it sorrow? Is it regret? What comes to his mind? The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 and 13 says we must esteem our leaders with love so we can have peace. Esteem your leaders with love so you can have peace. The devil knows what to fight. Just like he's fighting tight, he also fights your relationship with your pastor because he knows the benefits. To be a good member, I just wrote a few things here. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your pastor. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 to 19. Paul there was saying, pray for me. Your pastor needs prayers. 
Like I was telling some people recently, the prayer I've been praying for daddy, when the Spirit of God gave me that, that word, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all those that were oppressed, and the Lord was with him. You want to see the power of the Holy Ghost? Pray for your pastor. Pray for your pastor. Pray for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. So that that wisdom and knowledge, the understanding that you need, your pastor will give it and you can never remain small. Pray for your pastor. Pray for grace to stand. Pray for revelation. Pray for your pastor. Be a faithful member. Be a faithful member. Support the vision of your pastor. Blow the trumpets. Don't think that you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are trying to serve man when you are serving your pastor. No. You are obeying the word of God. And that's why the Bible says, believe God, be established. Believe your prophet, you prosper. God knows the benefits. So I want to encourage us today as we celebrate our daddy. Be a faithful member. Be a faithful member. Support the vision that God has given to him. And make leading easy for him. And the Lord will bless you mightily. I didn't hear amen. amen. I said the Lord will bless you mightily. Amen. No power can stop your blessing. Amen. Just take census of ministries where they honor their pastors. You can't stop their blessing. Because they know what it is. And God is doing his own part in their lives. As I was praying early morning on Friday, God gave me this word for our daddy and for us. Psalm 112. I want to really take this time to appreciate the men. They were in our house on Saturday. Please, let's put our hands together for Jesus for the men. God bless you. We had a great time together. Thank you so much. As Pastor Paul was leading prayer when they came, he made so, a statement. He said, every ministry that their general of Asia is into fornication, the branch pastors will follow suit. And every ministry that their general of Asia fears God and is looking out for the work of God, the branch pastors follow suit. And that is what has been happening in Christ the Rock Foundation Chapel. Every of our city pastor, they put in their best and God has been blessing them. So I want members also to put in your best so that God can bless you. I'm led to do this this afternoon. Let's go to Psalm 112. We'll read 1 to 10. Psalm 112, 1 to 10. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Does our daddy fear the Lord? He does fear the Lord. The man that fears the Lord and delighted greatly in his commandment. Our sister that spoke from Atlanta, she said when she and her husband were about to travel out, they visited us. They were still talking about going abroad and the, you know, the change of life and everything. Daddy's focus was, what is your vision? As you are going there now, what is your vision? What are you going to be doing for the Lord? That is what he will ask you any day, any time. His delight is in the commandments of the Lord. Yes, let's go. He seed. If you are a seed of Reverend Aki, okay, say praise the Lord. Yeah. See, what we are going to do this afternoon is prophetic. 
see, I told us during testimony time, word battle, you begin to speak the word. You use the word to fight the devil. His seed shall be mighty in heaven. In heaven. Here. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. You are the seed of Reverend Akioke. You are not supposed to be small. You are supposed to be mighty. So today, as we are celebrating Reverend Akioke, every smallness will give way. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of being mighty will come upon you today. That is going to pray for us. You will be mighty. If there is nobody mighty in your family, you have come. You have come. Because you are the seed of somebody that fears the Lord. You are the seed of somebody that delights in the Lord. Let's go. Wealth and riches shall be in your house. Somebody was praying, say, every spirit that wants to make me a debtor, I destroy you. The fact, you will say, the fact that I am a seed of Reverend Aki, okay, I cannot be a debtor. A parent came to the school. She was owing some money. And she told me some things, what they were going through. And I told her, I said, well, the Lord will bless your family. God is going to open doors. Now, <laughs> I don't know what we're saying. And I told her, there's a prayer I normally pray. That whatever money we solve will never be a problem in my family. She said, mommy, I catch it. So after a while, she came to me one day. And she wanted to bring another child. I said, mommy, you've not paid for this one. You want to bring? She said, mommy, Ebu, it's you that told me that whatever money we solve will not be a problem in my family. Mommy, don't worry. We will pay. Not long. That's how I received a letter. About the following day or the following week. She started paying. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Even me that gave her the word. I was saying, ah, you want to bring another one? You've not paid it. And she said, mommy, you told me that whatever you said, whatever money we solve will not be a problem in your family. And I too, I caught it. And I said, mommy, whatever money we solve will not be a problem in my family. Take the word and run with it. Let's go. Wealth and riches shall be in your house. And your righteousness shall endure forever. Amen. Now, daddy, this is for you from verse 4. Unto you, daddy, the upright, there ariseth light in the darkness. God will be gracious to you, full of compassion and righteous. Oh, verse 5, a good man showeth favor. That is who you are, daddy. You lend and you guide, God will guide your affairs with discretion. In the name of Jesus, surely you shall not be moved forever. You shall be in everlasting remembrance. In the name of Jesus, you will never be afraid of evil tidings. No matter what they want to say, no matter what the enemy may want to bring, you will never be afraid of evil tidings because your heart is fixed trusting in the Lord. Your heart is established. You will never be afraid until you see the desires of your, uh, until you see your desire upon your enemies. You have given out. God has told you that your members is not just people that sit to hear you. You have given out. You have dispersed. You have given to the poor, people that you don't know, and you keep giving. Your righteousness will endure forever. Your horn shall be exalted with honor. Your horn shall be exalted with honor. Your horn shall be exalted with honor. In the name of Jesus Christ. The wicked shall see it. They shall be grieved. They will gnash their teeth. And they will melt away. And their desire shall perish. In the name of Jesus. Before I call our daddy. I want you to bow down your head. And pray this afternoon. What kind of member are you?
what has been limiting the growth in your circle? I want you to pray for God's help. I want you to pray for God's help. And silence every lie of the devil. The devil has been lying to you. You don't have to honor him. Is he God? Ah. I want you to pray. Say, God, help me. Help me to honor my pastor. Is he your city pastor? Is it our daddy? I want you to pray. God, let my pastor remember me and be happy. Let me be like-minded with my pastor. Holy Spirit, help me today. Help me today. There are prayers you don't need to pray when you align yourself with your pastor. There are things you don't need to ask from God when you align yourself with your pastor. I want you to pray today. God, help me. Give me the grace, O oh Lord, to be a good member indeed. To be somebody that my pastor will remember. And my pastor will say, thank God for this man. Thank God for this sister. I want you to pray. Say, God, help me. Holy Spirit, I surrender to you this morning. Even as you have given Reverend Akioke to me as my pastor, not just my husband. Lord, help me. Help me, Holy Spirit of God. Let him think of me and say, God, thank you for this member, not just as a wife. Lord, I want to be a burden bearer for my pastor, Reverend Akioke. Not just as his wife, but as a member, Lord. Please help me. Help me, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, help me. Fill me with wisdom and knowledge how to go about it, O oh God. Help me, Holy Spirit of God. Help me. Help me, help me, help me. I surrender myself to you, Lord. I surrender myself. I pray for everyone here today and everyone listening to me. The grace to be the right member. Release upon us, O oh God. And every blessing that we have missed or that has delayed as a result of not being the right pastor, the right member, Lord, we ask that you have mercy upon us. We pray for our daddy also, the grace to be pastor after your heart. Continually give unto him, O oh God. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. If you know you are a seed of Reverend Akioke, I want you to please come out. He's going to pray for us and he will give us a handshake. Everything we have read in Psalm 102 will come to pass in your life. There are prayers you don't need to pray anymore in your life because you are a seed of Reverend Akioke. I'm not the one that said it. It's written there in the word of God. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, sweet, sweet Spirit, Spirit, we pray. In your grace,
welcome you. Holy Spirit, you are the action man of the Trinity. You are the Spirit behind the mandate, behind the mantle that you release upon the air at different generations. Look at these ones that you have begotten yourself. And one way or the other through here. You are the one that can ordain them. You are the one that can empower them. You are the one that can eh, 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 re release ability onto them. Power to be blessed. Power to make it. Power to affect their generation. Lord, I want to pray for everyone that has come out. The power to be blessed. The power to make impact. The power to win souls. And the power to dominate. To live in dominion. Is released unto them in the name of Jesus. Father, I cancel poverty. I cancel restriction. I cancel entrances. I cancel rough road. I cancel go slow. I cancel sickness. I cancel disease. I speak to you, church. I commission you to a life of speed, to a life of abundance, to a life to win souls. In the name of Jesus, you will not beg. Oh. You will not beg. In this land, in the region of Africa, of Nigeria, where we are, you will be mighty in the land in the name of Jesus. I decree that wealth and riches shall come to your houses and your bank account in the name of Jesus. I decree doors shall open unto you for greatness. Uh -uh. I connect you with greatness in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You are connected with greatness in the name of Jesus. I decree the glory of God we we, 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 we show over your lives. Father, I want to pray for every one of them. By your grace, you have blessed me. I decree because they are my seed in the ministry that you brought them yourself. All of you, you will get to levels I have not got into. The Lord has blessed me. The Lord has helped me. But because you are my seed, you will go further than I have gone in the name of Jesus. Angelic assistance is released over you in the name of Jesus. Even myself, I will go further and further, further more in the name of Jesus. And you yourself, you will go further, 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 further more in the name of Jesus. Every struggling, struggling, you struggle to, 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 to make riches on your farm. You struggle to plant the seed. You struggle to water it. You struggle to weed it. You every struggle to do anything in your life. I cancel them in the name of Jesus. From today and forth, men and women will build your walls. Men and women will build your vineyards. Father, I pray that the angel of the Lord, they are sent to add to assist and help these people in the name of Jesus your name alone will be glorified Lord we want to pray for your minister my wife that you have used I pray for open heaven I pray for grace outstanding grace divine revelation unction to deliver message that you give her unction and power to release the world that the world may make impact in lives in the name of Jesus you will carry her to higher levels 
to reach out to millions in the name of Jesus. Father Christ, the Rafa Dion Chapel, we shall reach out to millions in the name of Jesus. And we shall have joy in what you have done. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. I pray every sickness, every disease, every infirmity in your bodies, I cast them out in the name of Jesus. Stretch for your hands towards the front, Father. I command the anointing of God, grace of God, upon all these hands. Receive the mantle for healing. Receive the mantle for healing. Receive the mantle for deliverance. Receive the mantle for riches. Most of you have been struggling. Early as a youth, not early in life. I didn't grow up in inside riches. No. It was when I became a youth and I was still serving God. From, but from the age of 25, that was when God changed my level and put me on step of riches. I speak to all of you. Whether you are up to 25 years old or you are younger than that or you are older than that, the anointing for riches and overflow, financial authority, receive in the name of Jesus. You will never lack again. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I will just shake as I shake according to that instruction. I want you to receive. You have stretched for your hands and the Lord has dropped something. And as I shake it, that miracle is confirmed. In the name of Jesus. Where is Brother Henry? Can you come and do this for me? Receive multiple blessings in your life in the name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive multiple blessings in your life in the mighty name of Jesus.
cine am ucis-o. Dumnezeu mă tipulează în Ionac, în tăma cine am ucis-o. Dumnezeu mă tipulează în Ionac, în tăma cine am ucis-o. Dumnezeu mă tipulează în Ionac, în tăma cine am ucis-o.
outpouring. Thank you for the open heavens. Lord, I want to pray by this handshake. These ones are connected to greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus. With the right hand that I shook, there is a transfer of dominion of this world, of dominion in riches, dominion in knowledge, in wisdom, in authority of God, in the anointing of God, is transferred unto you in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree the floodgate of this city is open unto these ones. The floodgate of Nigeria is open unto you. The floodgate of heaven is open unto you. You will never struggle again. In the name of Jesus. With ease you will win souls. With ease you will win souls. With ease you will achieve your life goals. With ease you will receive money. With ease you will receive gold and silver and riches in the name of Jesus. Continually you are enthroned. Continually you are enthroned. You will fulfill destiny. Thank you Lord for answer prayers. We give you all the praises. Lord we pray for your servant again. Continually she is enthroned. There is an outpouring of revelation, of unction, and of grace to fulfill destiny. No power, no demon will stand before you. But the grace of God will catapult you to the highest level that all, heaven has ordained for you. I give you all the praises, Lord, for what you have done. I want to pray that everybody here, myself plus everyone, give us gifts today. Give us gifts today in the name of Jesus. The gift that will redefine our lives. Some lives there have been no. They say, ah, that man, okay, that man has been for some time. Shah. Nothing they have for him. Some people say, ah, that one never married now. Look at his age. Another is ah, don't marry for tea. No, you, you know, yeah, we no child. Father, I decree today a new story of honor and glory. A new story of overflow is written for all of us in the name of Jesus. We know you are our God and you are alive. And we know you will do it. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus.